Freedom reigns in this place. I love that song. It is the perfect song that leads us in to what we're going to be looking at this morning. But to make it easy, I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell you right off what we're going to talk about and what I'm going to challenge you to this morning. As you were listening to my prayer this, uh, today, there is a challenge that the Lord has put in my heart for a long time. I've been thinking about this moment for well over a, well over a week or two or whenever the assignment came to me. And it's wonderful because my wife and I and my children are coming off of a vacation. So we are fired up. We're ready to go. I'd love to tell you that we had church and watched the simulcast this morning and all of that. Unfortunately, I believe we slept through it. No, no, no. Actually, we were doing something else, running along, along, and having a good time. But all that time, I was thinking about this and what the Lord had put on the pastoral heart to talk about today. So I want you to know, in case you get lost, in case you fall asleep, in case something happens and you get called, I'm going to challenge you this morning. God has sent me to challenge you this morning to risk something anew for him. Risk it all for your Savior and Lord. Risk it for the kingdom. It's time to take a new step. It's time to look at God in a new way. It's time to put it all on the table, put it out there, and make a move that will make a difference, not only in your life, but as you'll see, in the lives of the people that we're looking at this morning, in their lives, and in the kingdom as well. So I want you to look at it from that perspective. I want that mindset on you right now. What is God calling me to risk? What is God asking me to move on to do? What is God challenging me this morning? Remember, first and foremost, when we preach something like this, we're preaching to ourselves. Any preacher that gets up here and talks is speaking to himself first. You have to get this into your heart. You have to get this into your mind. And the same question that I'm asking you this morning is a question that I asked myself in preparation of all of this. What is God asking me to risk for him? What have I not been obedient in moving forward and having faith in him? Somebody said, risk and faith are like the same, almost. This idea that believing God to move and to do something incredible. But oftentimes, as you will see, it's on us to move. It's on us to make a difference. It's on us to take the challenge. You know, I wrote down some quotes that kind of caught me in my research on this. And the guy that invented the, uh, the Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, he says this about risk. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that, that, cha- that is changing really quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not to take any risk at all. Maxwell March said, in asking the same question, he said this, often the difference between a successful man and a failure is not one's better abilities or ideas, but the courage that one has to bet on his idea and take a calculated risk, and the last thing, and to act. I want you to remember that phrase, and to act. Dr. Charles Stanley, a very famous pastor, the father of Andy Stanley, said this, Fear stifles our thinking and action. It creates decisiveness that results in stagnation. I have known talented people who procrastinate indefinitely rather than risk failure. Lost opportunities cause erroneous Uh, cause erosion of confidence. Let me say that again. Lost opportunities cause erosion of confidence. And the downward spiral begins. Sometimes we find ourselves in that case. We have found ourselves in a situation where we have been stagnant in our walk. We have been stagnant in our faith. We have been stagnant in whatever God has called us to do. We have taken so much risk out of our life did we find ourselves in nothing? And the spiral, the spiral, downward spiral begins to happen. Well, today, if you find yourself, we're going to break that. And we're going to move and we're going to say, God, here we go. Together, we can do this. 
I want to look at it from two different perspectives. And while I set this up, I want you to go to Daniel chapter 3. And we're going to be picking up the story in verse 16. But I'm going to kind of contrast two stories of risk this morning to kind of give us something to grab, our, grab a hold of, put some meat on this bones, and really give us this idea of risking it all for the cause of the kingdom. Now, as you turn there, I'm sure you will see that this is a story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you look at it, you say, I know the story. But really, I'd like us to kind of tear it apart with this idea of risk. Let's pick it up at verse 13, uh, verse 16. Now, as you can honestly know and obviously know, you know that it has to deal with a furnace. You know it has to deal with the fact that Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that there would be an idol, if you remember. And this idol was created. It was erected out of all kinds of different things. And there are wonderful sermons and studies on what each one of those things mean. That is not the portion, though, that I want us to focus on this morning. I want to focus on the actions of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, what happened is... There's a statue that was set up and a decree went out that said this, that every time you hear some sort of musical instrument or some sort of music, you are to bow wherever you're at, at this idol. And it's an idol of Nebuchadnezzar and it's to mean the king. And I mean, just really this haughty, I'm exalted, I'm the man, every knee will bow. It, the Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess about our Lord. In this case, there was three. They refused to get down. Let's look at it. Let's pick it up at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. He's asking him the question, why do you not bow before my idol? Why are you not doing? He was ratted out on Facebook by some of the holy people, and they were brought before him, and he was upset. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Let's continue. Verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated, heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And... And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, picking it up at verse 20, uh, 24, Nebuchadnezzar jumped in amazement and proclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men? And throw them into the furnace? Those around him said, yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar found it, shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the furnace unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, Come out, come here. Now I'm going to pause here and we're going to save commentary for just a moment. I'd like you to get a handle on the two stories that we're going to talk about and then let's kind of break them down on what I'd like you to see. So if you will with me, turn your Bibles to Matthew 14. We'll call it a little pause. Leaving Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before Nebuchadnezzar. Let's pick up Matthew chapter 14 and we're going to go to verse 22 pick up the story now remember jesus has just fed or it had just happened a little bit before the feeding of the five thousand. he has just been teaching he's really getting going things are coming on he has just done all this incredible work and we pick up this text that will also be 
familiar to you. Now let's look at it. Verse 22, Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately after this, after he had taught and after he had uh, done what he did, Jesus insisted that his disciples, disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell, and while he was there alone, and while night fell while he was there alone. Verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. He told them, don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Jesus said, yes, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Now we're going to pause there for just a moment. Two contrasting stories of people that were called to take a risk and move forward on that risk. Move forward on what they felt was needing to be done. Moving forward and making a difference in their lives and in the world of the lives around them. Now as I told you, we were on vacation and last Sunday, my sons and I were doing some, um, if you've seen, you've seen we're in San Francisco running around over there. And I literally had to stop because a thought came to me as we were running. I was all winded. I couldn't type into the phone. So I grabbed my son, Jonathan, and I said, John, put this in the phone. I want to say this. I want to share this with the people. I couldn't do it. <sighs> okay, Dad, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. This is something that came to mind as we consider this idea of risk this morning not all risk takers are difference makers but all difference makers are risk takers so this morning i'm asking you to make a difference i'm asking you to be challenged to make a difference to challenge yourself to challenge who you are and say i have been called i have been brought here to make a difference. Not all risk takers are difference makers, but all difference makers are risk takers. Some other things that I wrote down that I saw as we were looking, I want you to know, is we learn from risks. And those lessons may lead us on an important and take us to an important new level. The other thing I want you to consider this morning, you don't achieve your dreams by playing it safe. Embracing risk helps you to overcome a fear of failure. Great, otherwise unforeseen opportunities often come from risk taking. And if you look at the lives of those that we have just talked about, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're going to find these little parts of their lives in there. You're going to find these, these little sayings, these little things sprinkled throughout that. But here's what I want you to know. I know we've done a lot of reading and a lot of talking, but here's what I want you to do. In order for you to understand and really grab a hold this morning and making risk real for yourself, you have to understand these are regular people just like you being challenged by God to take a risk and believe in him. I think it would be easy to say, well, that's the famous Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's the famous Peter, the apostle. Well, if you take it from that, then you're going to say, well, that's not me. This morning, I want you to understand, there's flesh and blood behind those stories. There's flesh and blood behind those, those decisions. There's flesh and blood behind the calling that God has put on their life to take a risk, stand up, and do what looks ridiculous. And this morning, I want to challenge you to do the same. Stand up and move forward and do what seems to be ridiculous. Something that I've just entitled kind of this principle 
of risk, principles of, of the risk. I couldn't know what else to call it. But these are some things, and let's start to break this down a little bit. Number one, a risk taker, first and foremost, has to listen to God. A risk taker has to listen to God. Now, and you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, that is so easy. Come on, what do you mean, has to listen to God? Well, think about it this way. How many times have you known for a fact that God was telling you to do something? God was challenging you to do something. God was challenging you to say something to that person at that supermarket. God was challenging you to say something to that person. It's a family member that says, talk to them, talk to them, talk to that coworker. And yet we've done nothing. I don't mean hear him. I mean listen to God and act on that action. How many times have we stood behind and said, well, I don't know if that's God. I think it's the bad pizza that I had last night. That can't be God. And then we get all spiritual. Get thee behind me, Satan, with those bad ideas. No. No. That's God saying, do it. Listen to me. Believe in me. Take a risk. Let's do this thing. Listen to God. In our two examples, Peter listened to God. Do you really think it made sense to get out of a perfectly fine boat? Do you really think so? Yet God said, come on. Come on. Let's do this. And he listened to God and he did it. What looked ridiculous, and we like to focus on the fact that he sank. Come on now. That's not the fact of the story. It happened, and you're gonna, we're going to examine that in just a minute. But it's not the fact that he sank. It's the fact that he got out of the boat. Say, what if Jesus came to you and said, get out of the boat? What would you say to Jesus? I hear you, God, but not right now. You know, how many of us would have got out in it? I don't know about that. Listen to God. The dude stood on water. We all like to focus on the fact that he sank, but for a few steps, the dude stood on water. Whoa! Why? Because he listened to God and he stood on water. Man, that just like. Woo, come on. I've tried it. It's impossible. Every time I go to jump into a pool of water, I sink and I go to the bottom. But God's not telling me get out the boat and get on water. But Peter stood on water. I want you to see this. At any moment, Shadrach and Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have made it all go away. But God was saying, don't follow an idol. Don't ever bow before an idol. Their life could have been so much easier if they would have just bowed. And not taken any risk. Just bow. It's very simple. There was probably thousands of captive Jews that bowed, of Israel's, that bowed. Israelites, sorry. It could have been so easy. Why was it so easy to find them? Because they're the only ones standing up. But they listened to God. And they took a risk. And they said, man, I don't know where this thing is going, but I know I can't bow. I know I can't bow. At any step. When Nebuchadnezzar was saying, feeling enraged. You've seen that. You've seen that on your mama's face. You've seen that on your daddy's face. You've seen that on your teacher's face. It's that rage. (laughs) Why did you do that? I mean, Nebuchadnezzar, they say smoke coming out of the ears, whatever it is. At any moment, they say, (laughs) sorry, my bad, bow, story over. But they listened to God. And they said, no, we're going to risk it all. Right here and right now. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 tells us this. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most 
of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Those definitely, those words definitely resemble today. We live in evil, corrupt, horrible days. And it's time for the church to stand up, take a risk, and say, not me. I stand for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I stand for the kingdom of God. I stand for my fellow believers, and I will not sit because I hear the voice of the Lord. That is what this world needs. That is what this world is looking for. People that will hear his voice and stand. Look at this. This was something kind of neat. This is something kind of neat. No matter what the outcome, the Lord is still with you. I chose these two stories for specific reasons. Peter, as you can say, see, Peter, it didn't work out too good for him at the end. He took the risk. He sank down a little bit. Yet today, we call him a pillar of the church. It wasn't that one risk that defined him. It wasn't the results of that risk that defined him. It was the action that he took, believing in God and doing what he said, that ultimately is what has made an incredible move within the church to say, we can get out of the boat too. The results, you don't always see the results. You don't always know exactly what's going on. You just know what God is calling you to do. You know, I was looking at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and something occurred to me just right now as I was sitting upstairs looking at my notes. It's neat. It's this. You never know what's God going to do. That's what I've said. No matter what the outcome, the Lord is still with you. Look at what it says. It says that they were bound up. They were taken to the furnace door, but because Nebuchadnezzar had made it seven times hotter, they were standing at the door, and all the people, soldiers, the big strong ones, that were going to throw them into the furnace, what happened to them? It says it right there. What happened to them? What happened to the soldiers? Say it out. Yell, yell it out. They died. So who was there to throw them into the furnace? Nobody. At that moment, could they not have said, oh, well, sorry, nobody to throw us in. God bless you, furnace. See you later. No, but they knew. Man, I don't know everything that's going on. I don't know what's happening, but I know God is calling me to do this. The last step is theirs to fall in to the furnace. The miracle is in the furnace, but I would like to say the miracle was also at the door. When they faced a fiery furnace and say, I am risking it all for the cause of Christ. Here I go. We're going in. The miracle. And then now what are they doing? They're saying, oh, wow. They're jumping around in the presence of God. They, we might not always know what's happening. We might not always fully understand. But we know when God is saying, go for it. Go for it. Risk it. You can do it. I am with you. It doesn't always work out great, but you never know what the Lord is doing. Remember, as a result of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's faith, as a result of them going into the furnace, as a result of them doing what God had called them to do, remember the end of that scripture where it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the God that you serve. And then he made a decree later on. And the decree said, if anyone speaks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their houses will be burned. They will be burned. Talk about a change. They didn't know they were going to change a whole kingdom. They were just being obedient to God. And yet, as a result of that obedience, the kingdom of Babylon came. And the king said, the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, a nation was changed. A nation was changed. Number three, there is a time that you will actually have to get out of the boat. 
you will actually have to face the furnace. Verse 29 reminds us, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Verse 23, shows Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. And I think I've already said this, but the last note I wanted to make on that particular point, at any point they could have turned around. At any point, Peter could have not gotten out of the boat. At any point, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have said, we're going to bow before you. We're done with this thing. At any point. And yet they risked it all, and the kingdom was changed forever. There's two last things I want to ask you, and we're going to spend some time on this. Number one. Or the last one. You have to let go and you have to let God. And with that statement, I make a question this morning. What are you afraid of? You have to let go and you have to let God. So what are you afraid of? If God has sent examples of people that have taken monster risks and seen the honor and glory of God go on forever and ever and ever, what are you afraid of? And by extension, what are you waiting for? It's time. Not tomorrow, not next week, not 15, 20 minutes from now. It's time. It's time to get out of the boat. It's time to get moving. It's time to take God at his word in your life. I get to sit down with so many people and I love it. That's a part, I mean, I just embrace But something that always gets a little pinch in me is when I hear somebody say, God is calling me to, and they lay it out. And the obvious question is, well, what's going on? Well, you know, I've not been anymore, no, no, no. And they have a long laundry list of excuses, a long laundry list of reasons why not. And the question always comes back in my head at least, I don't necessarily do it at that time all the time, but oftentimes I will ask, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Perhaps there's a kingdom that is going to change on the risk that you take. Perhaps you're going to change the life of somebody on the risk that you take. Perhaps your life is going to change forever on the risk that you take. Now is the time. Today is your day. I don't remember if I memorized this from somewhere or I took it down. Complacency is the opposite, and I put in parentheses, the enemy of risk. Complacency. I like the way things are. It's fine. It's okay. Mediocracy, complacency, just everything's cool. That is the enemy of risk, of God-fearing, Bible-believing, spirit-filled people of God taking God at his word and getting out of the boat or jumping into the furnace. Because when you get out of the boat, you're going to discover that's where Jesus is. And when you jump into the furnace, that's where you're going to discover that's where Jesus is. It's time to allow God to be God. It's time to move forward. You will never be judged by the outcome of a godly risk. What do I mean by that? Notice Peter sank. Peter sank. Jesus grabbed him, and we got the lesson of, why did you doubt me? And yet, it's Peter, the apostle. Amazing. That did not define him. That did not deter him. That did not anything. That was part of the man that God was developing, and he took the risk. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego changed a nation, as I told you a moment ago. Changed a nation. 
Yet Babylon, you cannot find. That statue, you cannot find. My wife and I have been over there. There's like little remnants here and there. Nebuchadnezzar, he's, we know about him from some scratchings in the wall and from our scripture. You can't find him. Yet, the power of God, you can see it right now, today. The power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive and well today. You never know what you're going to change as you take that risk and jump into the furnace. The outcome is God's. The action is yours. And it's time to move. It's time to move. It's time to make a difference. So this morning, it's simple. I'm going to ask all the life group leaders and leaders to join me up here at this altar. And we want to pray for you today. It's time for us to agree together. It's time for us to take an understanding and say, yes, it's time to move. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here and we're going to sing that song. Freedom reigns in this place. It's time to let go, let God, and move forward in what he has called you to do. It's a new day. It's a new day. And it's time for us to agree together and move forward in that. First risk and probably the greatest ones is to get up out of your seat and make your way here. But we want to pray for you this morning. We want to embrace you this morning. So as the worship team uh, uh, sings this incredible song right now, I'm going to ask you to start to come. We want to pray for you. Find anyone up here. We want to pray with you. We want to agree with you. As people that have been called to be risk takers, every one of these leaders took a risk when they said yes. Every one of these leaders took a risk when they said, okay, I will. We know what it is. We know what you're going through. And we want to pray with you because we believe you're a holy risk taker. Come on, make your way up here. With make the your way. spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is free. 